Hello, and welcome to Formative Assessment and Instruction presented by Project Success in partnership with Indiana Department of Education. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Mary Baker Budisa, your presenter, and I've been with you throughout this paraprofessional webinar series. And I look forward to our time together today as we look at formative assessment and instruction in the classroom. Project Success is part of the Indiana Resource Network, and we work with educators to improve academic instruction and student communication and to increase access to general education for students with significant intellectual disabilities whenever appropriate. This slide provides a snapshot of some of the work that we do throughout Indiana with our partner districts. Today, we'll look at formative assessment. What is it? We'll understand the goal of formative assessment in the classroom. How do we use it? And also understand as paraprofessionals, how can you best support formative assessment in the classroom? We'll also look at some specific strategies for use with students with intellectual disabilities. What does formative assessment look like with them? In the email you received, you'll find the link to the webinar activities form for session four of this series. And you can also find this form on our website at www.projectsuccessindiana.com slash paraprofessional hyphen webinar hyphen series. You must complete this form to receive a certificate worth two professional growth points for participating in this session. You may want to complete the form as you follow along in the webinar. Take a moment to pause and click on the link in your email and access the form now. If you prefer, you can complete the webinar activities form after viewing the webinar by following along with the PowerPoint presentation and a link to that is also included in the email you received. Let's begin today with considering our current knowledge on formative assessment. Write a definition of formative assessment in your own words. Provide two examples of formative assessment in the classroom. Enter your responses in section two of the webinar activities form for this session. You may take time to pause the webinar while you answer these questions, and when you are ready, press play. Formative assessment is a process used by teachers and students during instruction that provides feedback to adjust ongoing teaching and learning to improve students' achievements of intended instructional outcomes. So formative assessment is a process, which means that we conduct this process throughout teaching and learning to diagnose student needs it helps us to plan our next steps in instruction and to provide students with feedback that they can use to improve the quality of their work. Through formative assessment, we can help students see and feel in control of their journey to success. Formative assessment requires planning. We don't do it in a vacuum. We're doing it intentionally and with an eye toward helping students to reach specific targets. When we look at the evidence of student learning as we go along that we collect through formative assessment, then it helps us to adjust strategies for teaching, um, the way that we work with the student, and it helps the student to adjust their learning tactics in order to better understand what is being taught. As a paraprofessional, your role will be to support the cooperating teacher in determining how well students are understanding the lessons and concepts that are being taught. And as you learn more about formative assessment, you can think about what tasks you already do every day that would be considered formative assessment in the classroom. So what formative assessment does is highlight the needs of each student. You gain immediate and useful feedback from the student and the student gains immediate feedback from the teacher or the instructor. It's a planned and intentional part of learning in the classroom and it focuses on progress or growth to support goal setting within the classroom curriculum. And it occurs in the context of classroom life, the learning environment. What formative assessment doesn't do is see all students the same. 
or as needing to be at the same place in their learning. We use formative assessment to determine where students might need additional support. And this feedback is provided immediately. Remember, it's not something that we want to be giving weeks or months after we've already collected the evidence. It always occurs at the same time for each student. No, we want to make sure that formative assessment is flexible enough to adapt to the places where we think we might need to ask a probing question or a guiding question for a student based on cues from that student. So it's very unique to each one. We don't focus solely on numbers or a score or a level. That's not what formative assessment is about. And it doesn't occur outside of authentic learning experiences where we're being intentional, purposeful about teaching a concept. We don't interrupt or intrude upon classroom life with formative assessment because it's a natural part of what we're doing in teaching the lesson and it's a natural part of how students are demonstrating their understanding as they learn. And as we continue to think about what formative assessment does and what it does not do, then it focuses on responsibility and care, that it gives us some immediate next steps that we can follow versus being focused on external requirements that are outside of the classroom and the, the learning environment. It encourages students to be a part of their own learning, to take greater responsibility for monitoring and supporting their own learning by knowing what they're supposed to be learning, where they're headed, and how well they're learning it. And we can consider multiple kinds of information based on the student's needs and based on communication style or communication mode. Um, understanding that a single piece of information is not enough, that we need to look at many types of information and evidence and tools and strategies to get that evidence from students as we're teaching. So it's really a tool that fits easily into daily classroom instruction, because even while many of our schools are using hybrid or distance learning during this time, the way that we use formative assessment still stands, that we're looking at ongoing teaching and learning and adapting the strategies based on that. There may be some ways that formative assessment will look different during a time when we're using um, digital or e-learning or distance learning, but the goal is still the same. And so it can help us to understand where students are in their learning process and how we need to adapt to support them. So take a few moments to consider these two statements and you will be asked to provide your answers on the webinar activities form. Are the statements true or false? The first statement, formative assessment is meant to interrupt or intrude upon classroom life. The second statement, formative assessment provides immediate useful feedback to both students and teachers. Use the information on the previous slides to check your responses, and you can either rewind or refer to the presentation slides that you were provided. Now let's look at the goals of formative assessment in more detail. Formative assessment is a constantly occurring process, a verb, a series of events in action, not a single tool or a static noun. Consider this quote. Formative assessment is a set of tools, which means that there's variety within those tools, just like there's variety in the students that we are teaching and supporting. So if the overall goal is to inform ongoing teaching and learning, then how do we use formative assessment in the classroom with different students? Well, the teacher develops lessons that are based on learning targets and standards, but some students will need additional support in reaching those targets. And formative assessment is one set of tools that help us to identify what specific additional supports students need what areas those supports are needed, and how best to reach the student and help them to achieve that learning goal. In formative assessment, the first stage is always to gather feedback. 
the teacher and the paraprofessional or whoever's providing instruction is gathering that feedback based on what has been taught to the student to better understand how much the student has understood of what's been presented. Then the feedback is used by both the instructor and the student to think through what's missing, what hasn't been learned yet, what concepts are a little bit of a struggle, to what extent does the student understand each of the concepts that have been presented. And then that third piece is the teacher and the or the instructor working with the student to think about how to improve ongoing teaching and learning. What are the next steps that are there? Most students with disabilities are not low performing students, but on the flip side, many low performing performing students don't have disabilities. But finding strategies to ensure formative assessment effectively includes all students, including students with disabilities. There's not a recipe that we have to apply um, based on any specific label, and there's not one that's applied only to students with disabilities or only to low performing students, but all low performing students, all students need high quality formative assessment practices to help them become higher achieving, to help students to take those next steps that will get them toward their larger learning objectives and goals. Paraprofessionals can partner with the teacher and with the student to help support their learning through this process. So from our previous slide, just take a few moments to consider these statements and whether or not they are true or false. All low performing students have a disability. Formative assessment can be used to support all students. Be sure to enter your responses on the webinar activities form. Let's look at the formative assessment process in more detail. To begin, we're clarifying the learning. That's the part where we're collecting data and asking questions, having students understand that this is where we're headed. And so as we teach, we need feedback on that teaching. We're gathering the evidence and we're interpreting that evidence to help us with immediate next steps for helping students to learn. And we respond by adapting teaching and adapting learning strategies as we go so that students can continue to work toward the larger target by meeting smaller targets along the way. Students who experience the formative assessment process strive to answer three questions. Where am I going? What am I trying to learn? Where am I now? What progress have I made toward my learning goal? What do I need to do next? What next steps will take me closer to my learning goal? They do this by generating and evaluating evidence of their own learning. This kind of formative assessment is part of learning. When formative assessment is used regularly in the classroom, the lines between instruction, assessment, and learning blend and blur. When students, for example, are aiming to learn to write persuasive pieces and during the writing process, they get feedback that they need to revise their work, they use that feedback to, as part of the process of making a better product or a better outcome for what they can do. They may ask the question, is this feedback an assessment or is it part of their instruction for that lesson where they revise? Well, it's both, because if you're asking them to revise something and then providing additional feedback, you're assessing what they're learning, but you're also giving them an opportunity to continue to do the task that has been assigned. And you're adapting it for that particular student's needs, what they need to, to make up or what they need to revisit and re-examine. And you can provide additional support so that they can continue to work toward that larger um, learning goal. So the insights that students receive from this feedback as they're reading it and applying it to their work, that it looks like assessment, but it also looks like learning. So true form of assessment kind of blends the lines between assessment, instruction, and learning for students. It's all part of that process. And the cycle continues and continues as students work toward 
larger learning outcomes. So the process then is where am I going? Visiting where am I now? And using that to think about where I need to go next and circling back around to repeat that. As part of where am I going, students need to know what the learning target is. They need to be able to discuss where am I headed? What's the goal of this lesson? And if they don't know the goal, then it's really not formative assessment. They need to understand that the process of teaching and checking in for understanding, that that's a part of helping them to achieve that goal. So consider students who use a different form of communication or are nonverbal. We can break down the objective to its simplest components. It may be that before we get to the larger learning goal, we need to start with identifying a mode of communication for that student. We need to work on core vocabulary so that the student can more accurately and effectively provide evidence of their learning by giving us feedback and we need to know that they can understand the feedback that's being given to them. So that may be um, an exercise of reinforcing core vocabulary as well. So those simpler components are a part of the larger learning objective. And that's why it's important that we all are on the same page, that the teacher or instructor, the paraprofessional and the student all understand what the learning objective is. That if we don't, then the student is really just complying with directions without really understanding that they're pursuing learning and a larger goal. This is an excellent opportunity for you to think about um, what it might look like for students with disabilities. If you're going to share a learning target with a student, you can do that verbally, but for some students, you might need to use visuals, you might need to use a picture, or you might need to use um, video or some audio to support their understanding of what the learning goal is. Students might benefit from putting the target into their own words and repeating back to you what it is that they believe they're supposed to learn or and giving them alternate ways to demonstrate that is really important. Using a visual organizer. So a board that says, first we do this, then we do this, or yes, no cards to create a way for, um, for more responses to happen, or a graphic organizer of some type. I can statements being posted where students can see them helps them to refer back to that and the teacher to refer back to the learning target throughout the lesson. And then students looking at examples of what positive work looks like. Um, can also help them to think and evaluate their work against what the target is. What would it look like if I knew how to do this correctly or demonstrate this skill? What might it look like to give them those examples? And as we mentioned in an earlier webinar about communication, communication that is clear and open between the cooperating teacher and you as the paraprofessional is critical. So having a time where you sit down with the teacher to ask questions like, what is the learning objective I'm sharing with the student? And maybe even how do I share that with this particular student? And what is the why of this specific target? Those are good questions to answer, a good discussion to have with the teacher because then you're supporting the student with consistent language and a one larger goal in mind. Um, and then you can share this information with the student as you continue to support them. <clears throat> so the second step in the formative assessment process is looking at where am I now? And this is where the teacher or the instructor, the paraprofessional and the student look at learning evidence and then the student gets feedback from their instructor, and then the student gives feedback on their understanding of what's happening and evaluates their own work in essence. So consider these examples of evidence of student learning. Students being able to use core vocabulary to respond to a question that's asked, these probing questions. If you're teaching about shapes, 
Now, which of these shapes is a circle? Which of these shapes is a square? Um, you know, these are things that you can do to prompt students to make sure that they're understanding the concepts that you're teaching. And then to also provide different means for them to express that. If students um, have limited knowledge of, of writing full words, then they might be able to highlight or circle or draw an image to reflect that they understand what's being taught. Some students, you may give them a, a prompt or a sentence starter, then they can fill in um, the words at the end. So all ways of looking at the evidence of student learning, what students are saying and how they're responding to questions, what they're writing to demonstrate that they understand a concept and their work, their actual project or what they build or created. Um, but there are multiple forms of presentation that you can invite students to share that help you to better identify that they've learned what was the target or the learning goal, and also to provide feedback on that that helps the student to understand areas where they might need to continue to build a skill or improve on a skill. And if you have questions about what kind of evidence students could be providing or what might be appropriate for the particular concept or for that specific student, then it's always another opportunity to sit down with the cooperating teacher and say, what kind of evidence should I be looking for from the student? How would that be expressed and what would that look like? So as a paraprofessional, again, your role is to support the teacher in helping students to learn. And as you do that, the more that you communicate, the better, the more that you have those times that are set aside to go over things with the, with the um, cooperating teacher, the more effective that you'll be, the better support you'll be, and the better outcomes you'll see for students. So think of a couple of ways that you um, and your cooperating teacher can see what a student has learned. Give two examples of evidence of student learning and enter those responses on the webinar activities form. The third part of the formative assessment process is to adjust your ongoing teaching and learning to improve achievement, the where to next. Now that I understand the learning target, where we're going, we're on the same page about that, we looked at where we are in understanding now using formative assessment strategies um, like questions and we reviewed evidence of the students learning. Now we need to make those adjustments, whether they're subtle adjustments or greater adjustments to the teaching and learning process to help the student to achieve the learning outcome. And as part of the ongoing learning process, your cooperating teacher may ask you to teach a supplemental lesson or a mini lesson to reinforce content that has previously been taught or to further develop a skill so that a student can move on to the next learning target. All of this happens as a result of formative assessment that gathering evidence of what students have learned based on a target that everyone knows the student is trying to reach, that this is a process that helps to inform what the student's needs are and helps to um, helps the teacher or the para or um, the student to adapt what is happening so that they can acquire that skill, so that they can further develop and meet that learning objective. And again, Spending time talking to the teacher about this process. If you're going to teach a supplemental lesson and review information that's previously been taught with a student or with a group of students, what would that look like? How would formative assessment work during that time? What suggestions does the teacher have for you? What are some specific things that the teacher would like for you to ask or data that you need to collect that would help the teacher then to plan for the next day or to um, to plan future lessons or additional work that a student might need and whether that would be one on one or to continue in a small group. And as you meet, share what you're learning about formative assessment today. 
say, these are the things that I understood well, and these are the things that I would really like to learn more about and ask how that might continue to look in the classroom and where you can develop additional strategies for formative assessment with your students. So let's explore formative assessment strategies for working with students with significant intellectual disabilities. First of all, you might use visuals or students may communicate with speech to text software instead of verbally, communication boards, and scaffolding with those smaller steps instead of taking the entire learning target at once, breaking it down into some of the individual steps. And as the teacher outlines these things, then you'll be a part of supporting the formative assessment that tells how effective those strategies are, whether the student is continuing to make progress, or whether we need to go back and revisit some previous concepts or provide additional support. That you can reinforce what a student is doing well relative to these goals that they're working toward, and that the student may be using concrete manipulatives or visuals with you to demonstrate their learning. So using visuals to share the learning goal with the student, using alternate means of communication to allow the student to provide evidence, smaller steps, extra time for students to respond to questions, help with ongoing formative assessment, and the feedback that we provide to students reinforces how well they're doing at working toward that goal. And the means by which the student continues to demonstrate what they're learning and what they know may vary from student to student. And this is a document that's a great resource for you and your cooperating teacher, again, to talk about, to look at, and to think about for students who do not have an identified um, disability, the formative assessment strategy maybe has more layers, more steps to it. Whereas for a student with significant needs, we might break it down to one step and use those um, over a period of time to assess what concepts the student is, is learning and how close they are to achieving their individual um, learning targets toward a larger goal that is on track with their peers in the classroom. So for example, um, exit tickets or exit cards that are written student responses to questions that are posed at the end of the class or the end of a learning activity or even at the end of the day. The teacher might, for a student with significant needs, pose a single question at the end of the class, and that student might give a response using a picture or simple words um, instead of writing a paragraph uh, as for the prompt. And remember that all of the resources that that we include today in this presentation, you can find either a link to them in the email that you received, or you can visit our website um, and the resources will be there. So let's look at just a few things that are tools for formative assessment during distance learning. As your district or your school is navigating through um, the restrictions around COVID-19, if they're using distance learning to support students during this time, what's one thing that you as a paraprofessional are doing to support distance learning for students? What's one challenge of supporting students during distance learning or e-learning? How does that look different than in your regular day-to-day -day when you're in person for instruction? Be sure to enter your responses in the webinar activities form. Formative assessment at a distance has many of the same um, components that it does when we're face-to-face -face and doing instruction in the formal classroom. It's important to know the purpose. It's important to know what that learning target is, that the student knows what that learning target is, and that the continual formative 
predictive assessment is providing feedback on how we're progressing toward that learning target for the student. That data is collected over time and that we focus on the value of feedback to help students understand where they are and also the feedback that we get from the student to help us as instructors and supporting instruction to know how best to do that. That you can check for understanding in synchronous sessions. So sessions maybe where you're um, meeting live with students versus when students are viewing something that is recorded. So making sure to have those check-ins is important. And at this point, it will be particularly important for you to have personal conversations with the students, to talk with them and to engage with them in ways that help to draw out some of the things that would have been more natural when you're face-to-face -face, that are a little more difficult when you're communicating um, over Zoom or some other conferencing software and check in on students' social emotional learning, because during this time there can be an added stress or strain for students who are engaged in distance learning and for your students, whether they have an identified disability or they don't, for parents and families who have busy schedules, then thinking about how to check in on the student, how they're doing, how they're faring, and how they, um, how they feel about the way in which they're learning. And making it a useful, useful, time when you are working with students at a distance. Leveraging everything that you know about formative assessment, about that student and how you typically connect with them to enhance the time that you're having to spend um, doing instruction via a distance. So here's a, a tool, 75 digital tools for apps um, and apps for teachers that they can use to support formative assessment. Uh, this is a document that I've also linked to on one of the resources that's provided for this webinar. Um, some of the more popular ones or that we've um, had feedback from teachers that they've used are Animoto, uh, Answer Garden, Brain Pop, Edpuzzle, and Flipgrid. These are great tools to support formative assessment in a digital environment, and you can Explore some of these as you talk with your co cooperating teacher about what strategies um, could best work for students. And you can be an excellent partner to teachers in using these with students. Some of them, um, you know, will allow for the teacher to create uh, mini lessons that you can then use with students or some fun activities that are also um, helping the student to better engage around learning uh, concepts. And another resource is 24 digital tools for formative assessment. Thinking about uh, Kahoot, if you're already using that, maybe you are poll everywhere. Ways to let students participate and give you feedback on what they're learning um, and how well they're progressing toward learning goals. That uh, immediate you know, answering a question or responding to a little Quizlet, um, posting ideas in a shared source uh, that, you know, other students are also contributing to. So these are all good tools and strategies that you can use for formative assessment um, as we navigate through periods of hybrid or digital or asynchronous learning. So as you think about what you've learned today about formative assessment and the, the beginning concepts that you have of what that is and how that operates in the classroom and how it supports instruction, think about um, two or three things that you will be discussing with your cooperating teacher. Again, communication is really key. So enter those responses on the webinar activities form and make a plan, schedule a time to talk with the teacher to make sure that you're sitting down sharing some of the things that you've learned in this webinar and throughout the webinar series, because that will be very helpful in moving forward, um, supporting students with the very best resources and tools, providing them with the best opportunity to achieve the, um, the instructional outcomes, and also just establishing relationships with your students that um, students trust that you're there to support their learning and helping you um, to be the best resource and support for them that you can. 
So I hope that you've enjoyed the formative assessment and instruction today. Uh, please be sure to refer to the email you received and visit our website at any time, www.projectsuccessindiana.com uh, slash paraeducator hyphen webinar hyphen series. We'll take you to the specific page with the webinars, um, the recordings, the resources, and any of the presentations so that you can view the slides for the webinars that you've seen. You can contact me with questions at any time at mbakerbudisa at pcgus.com. Again, this has been formative assessment and instruction for paraprofessionals, and I thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day.